challenge, Dr. Jace. We got week one, day six. Today, I'm going to be going over the nervous system and how that affects all the tissues around it. Also, we're going to go into a little bit of the intensities and how you can control some of that. Uh, and then we're also going to go into um, a couple other things in terms of rotational movement versus um, linear or sagittal frontal movement, if we will, um, and how planes of motion play a factor into everything. So I kind of th thought it was very fitting to the picture in this top corner, um, how your nervous system controls everything, um, whether that has impact on the arterial system, uh, the lymphatic system, uh, the structural system, the lungs, heart, like everything. It has a, a factor in, in how everything functions. Now, let's go to the picture that we have on the screen of the, the human body. Now, a lot of this, you guys probably have questions on the sag nerve. That is this huge nerve right here. Um, and I go, as it goes down and attaches, branches out to other tissues, some of it is just for sensation of the skin. Some of it is for deep pressures of deep dermal or skin layers. Um, some of it is for actually movement. Um, I don't want to get into the weeds too much, but how your nervous system functions, um, there's signals from your tissues, which then go to your brain. There's signals from your tissues that go to the spinal cord. Um, and then sometimes they go back down and there's a loop between the, where the spinal cord is and the tissues itself. So, uh, that will depend on um, certain situations that arise, but uh, the body senses things um, in terms of what one nociception or pain, discomfort, um, others of deep pressure or light pressure. Um, there's different nerves for that. Some of it is thermo, uh, thermal regulation um, and how certain temperature receptors pick up off the skin. I kind of found it fascinating to where um, and a lot of people don't think about this. Like when you're in the shower, your body recognizes the, the pressure, the unique pressure gradient of the, the water molecules hitting your skin over a period of time. And it recognizes the temperature as well. And between those two things, it can recognize, oh, this is water on, on the body. Um, and it's not just uh, the body doesn't recognize um, this is just water. It's a, a cascade of things to where you ingrain that into your central pattern generators in your brain, uh, and your body picks that up that way. And then there's also receptors on vibration, um, and then also movements in terms of a proprioception or where your body's at in space, um, and how all those influence and go back to the brain and the brain to the body, and also spinal cord to the body as well too. Um, usually with like delayed onset muscle soreness, um, or a lot of people refer to this as DOMS, usually there's a disconnect or a re-regulation of the nervous system from the tissues to the body. And that can be um, lead to soreness over a period of time, especially when the tissues are adapting. The, the nervous signal has to then uh, get caught back up. So just pay attention to those, but the nervous system is incredibly important. Um, oftentimes if people have sciatic pain, usually if it's a knee and above, it could be a mixture of the muscles holding on and causing constriction around the nerves of the glutes and slash or pinching off of nerves, um, from the lower back as well. It could be a mixture of all those. Um, if it usually goes, if the pain or side pain ooh, goes below the knee, then most commonly it's referred to the lower back. But just so you guys pay attention to that, those factors will play in. So the one thing that we can pay attention to and we can re-regulate is the intensity of the muscle contraction. And usually how I like people train, especially in office, um, is you, I want you to be able to re-regulate your nervous system. So starting off with whether it's contracting a muscle, your whole body, doesn't matter. Um, starting off with a low level contraction. So we can do this together. So um, if you squeeze your bicep, whether it's length in state or bent, it matters, but for this demonstration, it doesn't. And just slowly contract that and build up off the, on the intensity to as hard as you possibly can, and then slowly back off. 
for the bicep, I mean, naturally you want to do a curl and un, and not do a curl just because the, the muscles are coming closer together. However, if you squeeze while the arm is a lengthened state, there we go, it's going to bleed energy to the ligaments and tendons, usually uh, above and below where the muscle inserts. And then you can slowly squeeze from there and then slowly back off. I want you going very, very slowly in terms of like a 10 second progression at 25%, uh, 50% intensity for five seconds, 3% intensity for 75%, uh, and then one second at 100%, and then slowly back off from there. It's just the regulation. So you can attach the nervous system to the tissues that you are working on. And I think that's incredibly, in, it's valuable in terms of, one, do you want to bleed energy to the ligaments and tendons um, and the deeper structures? Or two, do you want to bleed energy into the muscles? If you do the muscles, it's going to require lengthening and shortening um, type of movements or concentric, eccentric. Um, in terms of the ligaments and tendons, it has to be a lengthened state or two length. And then you hold that for a period of time. Um, if you want to train the joints, then you have to go through the fullest range of motion of that joint, which we're going to do tomorrow. Um, we're going to get into workspaces and the fullest range of motion of the knees, um, just so you can use the edges of the joints, thus also opening up um, other areas that you weren't able to access and have the nervous system connect to those tissues um, and create afferents feedback as well. So um, those are all the things involved today. Um, I definitely want you to go back through what you did yesterday and go over uh, the full range of motions until failure. If you're sore, I still want you to go to it. Um, um, oftentimes you won't be able to hold that position for as long, but we have to induce adaptation. Um, so it's gonna require um, a lot of stuff. But uh, in terms of the recovery rate, uh, ideally you want a good night's sleep as well. You wanna drink a lot of fluids. Um, and then de-stress your body. One of the best ways you can de-stress the body is the double inhale, exhale. You do that five times in a row, you're going to be sitting in a really, really good spot. Make sure that exhale is long though. So uh, Dr. Jace signing off on the nervous system functions. Um, and then, yeah, go back, practice those range of motions until failure. And we'll see you on the next one.